Hi, everyone. If you're just joining, um, thank you for joining our webinar this morning with the Lang Center. We'll let um, some more participants fill into the, to the room before we kick things off. Um, watching the numbers still grow, so we'll give it a, a minute or two before we get started. You're just joining, you're in the right place. You're here for the Lang Center webinar with Columbia Business School. Um, we're just waiting for a few more people to trickle in before we, we kick things off this morning. Um, thank you for joining us. All right, I think we're starting to level off a bit. So I will kick us off. Um, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Nicole Newham. I'm on the admissions team at Columbia Business School. Um, and I'm thrilled to be joined by the Lang Center team this morning to talk more about um, all things entrepreneurship at CBS. So um, just a quick run of show of how this morning is going to um, look for the next hour or so. We'll do some introductions. Um, the Lang Center team will give an overview of um, the resources and programming at Columbia Business School um, that's offered through their center. Um, we have an alum joining us as well who's going to speak to his student experience and we will wrap with Q&A. Um, so if you have questions that come up throughout the webinar, please drop them in the Q&A box. I'll be monitoring that and saving some, some questions to call out at the end of the team here. Um, this event is recorded, so if you have to hop off early, you can find it on our recorded events page um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think that's all the logistical things I need to talk through. So I'll stop talking and turn it over to the Lang Center to introduce themselves. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Lara Hitmonik. I'm the Managing Director of the Lang Center. We're really excited to have you here today and to talk to you about everything we do here at Columbia Business School. Um, so, Nicole, if you want to go to the next slide, I can go into my quick bio. Um, so, I'm class of 99. My hometown is in Piedmont, California, which is outside San Francisco. Um, current role uh, leading the Lang Center, I've been back working here at the business school for about four and a half years now. Previous to that, uh, I was on the founding team of several different marketing agencies. And in the first half of my career, I um, had a couple of marketing roles within luxury goods companies, uh, notably Hermes and Coach. In terms of ed education before CBS, I was Vassar undergrad in art history. Um, very relevant. Um, fun fact, the Hulu show Only Murders in the Building was filmed in my building. Um, yes, I did run into Steve Martin and no, there are no actual murders in the building. And I will hand it to Gabriel Mejia, who will um, introduce himself as well. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'm Gabriel Mejia. I am the Senior Associate Director of the Lang Center. I'm originally from New York, from New York, although I as my fun fact says, I have lived in seven countries. So I have lived in Spain, France, Italy, Dominican Republic, Chile, and Algeria. Um, prior to this role at the Lang Center, I was the assistant dean of the finance graduate programs at Fordham University. I'm also the director of an angel investing network based in New York, 37 Angels. And in terms of education, I have a triple major in undergrad in international economic development, international business, and Western European literature. And I have a master's in higher and post-secondary education from Teachers College. And I already mentioned my fun facts, but I also speak five languages. So I look forward to getting to know all of you today. And next up, Lawrence. Hi, everyone. Um, I graduated class of 2020. I am currently the co-founder of AvonD, a company I started at Columbia my first semester um, while at the MBA program. Um, before Columbia, I was working as a software private equity investor. Um, and the fun fact I have to share is that I won the official nugget eating contest um, at Columbia. And I think we should give a prize to someone who can guess the amount of McDonald's McNuggets I consumed in four minutes. Feel free to drop your guesses in the chat. <laughs> All right. I don't know if there is still a chicken nugget contest. Um, so we don't have a slide on it, uh, but we will we will go over some of what the Lang Center does. 
and some of our key programs. Um, so I'm just going to kick us off here. So the Lang Entrepreneurship Center, our, um, we've been, we were established a little over 20 years ago. Um, our main goal is to give everyone that comes through Columbia Business School the, the tools uh, and the resources to think and act like an entrepreneur while you're in a relatively spa safe space here at Columbia. Um, and that is, you know, our goal is really to drive innovation um, and an innovative mindset. And that you can take with you, whether you become a founder yourself, uh, whether you innovate at a larger company, you maybe want to work at a startup or somewhere else in the ecosystem, uh, perhaps as an investor, or even innovating in your own life. There are actual tools and techniques to do this that are proven and actually a little rather scientific. Um, so, and, you know, and you become part of a lifelong network and um, uh, we keep we keep in close contact with our alumni. All right, so uh, I think you've seen some of us here. Um, I will just point out Professor Angela Lee, who is our um, faculty director and also teaches the VC courses here. Um, and I'm going to hand it to Gabriel, who oversees a lot of our programming to kind of break down how it works and what we offer. Thank you so much, Lara. So as Lara mentioned, you know, we, our center is overseas three different areas of the business school. So that's venture capital, entrepreneurship, and innovation. Within those subject matter areas, our focus is on curriculum programs and then extracurricular and co-curricular resources. So you can see here this sort of matrix of the areas that we are, that we pretty much oversee and then the ways that we interact with that. And apologies for my dog who loves to bark whenever I am actually speaking to someone on Zoom. Um, so curriculum programs and resources. <laughs> of course, I, I am very sorry, she was very quiet a minute ago. In terms of curriculum, for our launch course, it's more entrepreneurship. Lara, can I ask you to look at, to just talk about entrepreneurship curriculum for a moment while I call my my dog? I am sure. so sorry for sure. that. But Gabriel, I actually, I, 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 we can't actually hear, I can't actually hear your dog, by the way. Um, okay, they're perfect. Um, uh, so cur curriculum, um, so we sponsor the entrepreneurship and venture capital curriculum here, um, which we call the sort of foundational courses, foundations of entrepreneurship, foundations of venture capital. There's also foundations of innovation that we're involved in. And then from there, there are um, courses that sort of go up the ladder. Launch your startup is for uh, sort of more serious founders that you are very experiential class where you work on your startup during the class and um, each class becomes more customized to what you're doing, what your pro the problem you're solving, the solution that you are testing and what it is you need to get to your next level. And um, I, I think that the, um, I will actually hand it to Gabriel. I think he's ready to maybe talk about Greenhouse and the rest of the VC courses. Yes, thank you all. Apologies again for um, the slight interruption. So as Lara mentioned, we have we our curriculum for entrepreneurship. We have a there are lots of courses in our entrepreneurship. We own several of them that are more functional in general and at in areas. So there's foundations of entrepreneurship, then you can take launch your startup, customer driven product optimization, which is also known as launch your startup too, and then finally greenhouse. And the purpose of our curriculum is to get you from ideation. So you know that's a problem that you want to solve. There's something that you really want to work on all the way through getting very close to launching. So every class will get you through those steps from ideation to MVP development, customer discovery, iteration, and working on every single aspect of your business model and get you as close to launching as possible, if not already launching. From the invest side, we have our financial venture capital courses, our foundational venture capital course. And then we have other courses that give you different aspects and knowledge about working in venture capital. So financial venture capital is more focused on an individual deal as an investor. Building an investment thesis focuses more on um, a firm, so creating your own venture capital fund. And then VC seminar is the venture capital industry as a whole. We won't focus too much on scale because scale can, is very broad and there's almost every course at the business school can kind of fall under one aspect of scale. So that's curriculum. From a program side, we will cover 
uh, some specific Hallmark programs during today's presentation, but you can see here the, a very non large but non-comprehensive list of programs that are available to you in each one of these three buckets. So we offer workshops, grants, resources, one-on-one -on -one mentorship, group mentorship in each one of these areas throughout your time at the business school. Some of them are open to you throughout your entire time here. Some of them are only open to you as a second year student, but as you, you know, as you explore more about the business school, you'll, you'll learn more about these programs. We'll talk more about some of these today. And then should you, we all meet you in the fall, you know, we will have more info sessions and we always love to talk to entrepreneurs and investors. And on the last side of the slide, on the right side, there's a resource and community. So these are just resources that are available to students anywhere from the student clubs in these areas to the land coach office hours, uh, access to databases, showcases, we try to provide support in as many ways as possible to help you get to that next stage of your career. And Nicole, can you go to the next slide? So we talked a little bit about this. Our courses run from launch, which is more entrepreneurship specific, invest that's venture capital, and then scaling that's kind of growing your business to that next stage. Uh, the courses that are in bold are our foundational courses. Um, those are the ones that you would normally take if you have an interest in any of these areas. And then the ones underneath them are the ones that are um, higher level electives that get you through the process of specializing more in launch and invest. And then scale finally are just more general courses. And we're happy to talk more in depth on any of these courses during the Q&A, but I, for the sake of time, we want to make sure that we get through everything. Uh, for the next slide. Here are some of our Hallmark programs. And the main one for entrepreneurs is our Summer Startup Track program. So Summer Startup Track is a eight to 10 week long um, co-curricular uh, inc student incubator program. Uh, what you get as part of this program is access to weekly workshops with industry experts, uh, faculty on different aspects of launching a startup. So anywhere from customer discovery through ideation, um, growth hacking, um, how to use non-code tools to build an MVP, uh, how to fundraise. So it runs the full gamut of what you need to know as a founder. You also get access to one-on-one -on -one coaching with uh, some of our line coaches that are available throughout the year, but also other alumni who volunteer their time just during the summer, and also peer support. So we have uh, round tables with your fellow student participants where you all support each other in the challenges that you're facing through launching, your working and launching your startup. The program is very flexible and you get what you will get out of it what you put in. We offer it on a full-time and a part-time track. We also offer a, a in-person and a virtual component entirely what is most flexible for you with your schedule. We often have students who are interning over the summer, but also decide that they want to work on their venture part-time and that's perfectly fine. At the end of the program, if you are in a full-time track and you fulfill the attendance requirements, you have the chance to apply to pitch to get, uh, to win a grant at the end of summer startup track. And the grants range from everywhere from 2,500 to $10,000. You know, I often speak to students who have completed summer startup track and they always mention how um, useful it was in terms of just building a community of fellow founders because entrepreneurship can be very lonely, especially if you are a solo founder and just building this community, working with people who are, who know the challenges that you're facing, who know, uh, who can offer support and advice is invaluable. And many of our founders keep on speaking to the coaches that they work with them during summer startup track. Some of them will even invest in them or serve as advisors for their ventures. So it's one way that we continue to build a very vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem within Columbia Business School. And you know, we it's become very popular. So just to give you a little bit of context, last year alone, we had 95 ventures um, with over 135 students participating and it keeps on growing every year. So hopefully we'll get to know, meet all of you next year and that you'll be part of Summer Startup Track next summer. So for the next slide. Uh, wait, once um, just before we move on, this the last bullet here says Summer Stipend. It is, it's actually the um, 
the grant opportunities that that students pitch for at the end of the summer. So I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, thank you, Lara. Can I ask a very quick logistical question before we move on? Yes. Um, can you clarify that if this is offered to both August entry and January entry students? Yes, that is correct. We often have many, many J many J term slash spring entry students who participate in the program. And we make we try to work as closely as we can with, with our economic um, affairs office to make sure that we're scheduling around core classes and electives to make sure that you have access to all of the programming. So none of the workshops or any any of the peer support resource or one-on-one -on -one coaching tends to be scheduled during class time. It's always during lunch, in the evenings, or in the morning. Thank you. Another one of our Hallmark programs is called CTEC. And this is a selective cross-disciplinary program for second year CBS students and engineering graduate students. Um, in terms of which kind, what kind of CBS student, it's those that have a STEM background. So highly technical MBA students who have an interest in entrepreneurship. And we provide, similar to Summer Startup Track, we provide access to workshops and one-on-one -on -one mentorship, specifically designed for students that have a STEM background and are working in a on a startup that is more technical in nature. Um, part, of, part of the appeal of this is that there are always um, skill sets and needs that are specific for STEM founders that we hope to supplement what happens in the classroom with the CTEC program. And this one is for second year students and it meets and it runs from fall to spring. The primary goal, at least traditionally, was to prepare students that are in CTEC to apply to our greenhouse um, program which is our kind of student accelerator program that meets in the spring of your second year. Although it has evolved in the past to provide year long support in your second year, preparing you to, for a career in entrepreneurship post-graduation. And then for the next slide, Columbia Built Lab. This is another one of our Hallmark uh, entrepreneurship programs. And the main purpose of Built Lab is to help you with getting matched with engineers who will work on, we match MBA founders with Columbia engineers from either, from other both undergraduate and graduate students who will then code your MVP on your behalf. Um, it is a very highly popular program. We have a roughly a five to 10% admissions rate just based on the high demand for spots in the program. Normally you will be matched with three engineers based on the needs for your MVP, um, for your MVP, but also the kind of uh, knowledge that you require your MVPs, your engineers to have. Um, and they will work on you over the course of a year to help you create that MVP that you need. So when can you apply for Built Lab? There is no, it can be at any point during your time here at the business school. However, one of the requirements is that you have done significant customer discovery that can inform what your actual needs are for your MVP in order to make sure that we are maximizing our funds and that you are applying to the program at the right time um, in your entrepreneurial journey. And I'll hand it over to Lara to speak to our Columbia Venture Fellows Program. Yeah, um, and I took a peek in the chat and I think there are a couple um, questions about resources and support we have for students that are focused on a career in venture capital. Uh, our key program here is called Columbia Venture Fellows. We only take about 15 students per year. It's a two-year program. It is very, very competitive um, to get into. It's quite intensive as well. So we're really, 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 really only looking for the most dedicated um, students looking to, looking to, um, for a path into VC throughout their two years. Uh, so it, the, the components include um, VC coursework, which is required, and we kind of help you get into those classes, and some of them are quite difficult to get into. Um, there is an investment thesis portion where, where we will pair you with a leading VC in the New York City area, um, and you help you work with them throughout the term and help them write an investment thesis. And the third part of this is doing due diligence on an actual investment process for our Lang Fund. The Lang Fund is our VC fund, and we fund st both student alumni companies, about 10 companies each year. And the Columbia Venture Fellows 
um, take active part in um, helping us filter through applications um, and interviewing those companies, writing due diligence memos. Um, so uh, we just mentioned a few of the really high level um, programs. And as you can see, there are a lot more. You don't need to read this. Um, these, these maps are available for download on our the Lang Center website. And they kind of track the three areas of focus that Gabriel talked about, launch, invest. Um, um, oh, sorry. And the third one is alumni. So, it, you know, you're here for less than two years. Um, and but your experience with Columbia Business School and the Lang Center doesn't end there. There are a number of alumni, <clears throat> um, both programs and support and resources that we we continue to provide. So if you want a cheat sheet, um, you can quickly see a description of each of our programs, as well as indication of where there are funding opportunities and which ones are application based. Okay, um, so just in terms of, um, so we kind of went over a lot in terms of like the details and the programming and your possible experience and your journey, um, should you start here at the business school, um, just taking a step back. So what do our, what does our alumni community actually look like? So in the last 10 years, according to Crunchbase, there have been 726 venture backed startups coming out of the business school, either current students or alumni. They've raised a collective 23 billion, um, over 120 exits. And uh, I will also point out in terms of VCPE funds raised by Columbia Business School alumni, 226 billion estimated. So quite a really, really active, um, very innovative driven community. Just to give you a little um, taste of, um, some of the the actual startups that have come out of CBS. I'll take, um, I'm sure that you recognize at least some of these logos here. Within here, there are a number of recent unicorn companies and I'll just point out a few. There's um, Betterment, ZocDoc, KHealth, Avanste, Flexport, Compass, uh, Sitecore, CityMD, to name a few. Okay, I'm not sure why that says Lang Team <laughs> up there. Yes, we work at all these companies here. Um, but these are these are VC funds where CBS alums are either founding partners or general partners. All right. Um, so now, what you've all been waiting for, we're happy to hand it back to Lawrence Komen to talk about his unique experience as a founder through CBS. Thank you, Lara. Um, so good to be here. Appreciate uh, the time, the opportunity to speak to you all. I got to CBS with a pretty explicit uh, mission to combine healthcare with software. Um, so day one, I was looking for earlier stage opportunities um, in that intersection. Uh, I guess the context is that my prior life had been in finance and private equity and I liked the software investing component of my um, of my PE job, but I didn't like the finance world and didn't really find it meaningful. So I thought um, I could kind of get more of that meeting and be a bit more hands-on um, and build in both early stage and healthcare, which is whereby all my family works in. So um, from day one at Columbia, I was trying to do everything entrepreneurship uh, focused and everything healthcare focused because I didn't really know much about healthcare. Um, in my first semester, the Lang Center actually connected me to two physicians who were at the Columbia Medical Center. Um, they had just procured an interview with Y Combinator um, and they were building their own technology for themselves as, as practicing physicians um, to enable better decisions, faster decisions at the point of care. Um, and they reached out to the business school and said, we need a businessman to help us uh, with this interview and, and then beyond. Um, so I raised my hand for that opportunity, consulted with these two physicians, um, 
And then we realized we we all clicked pretty well together and were complimentary. So co-founded the company um, winter break between my first and second semesters of uh, CBS. So by first year, second semester, I was already working on my startup, which is now called AbleMD. Um, I took a lot of the courses and programming made available directly through Lang. So um, I took the launcher startup class. I took my company through that. Um, I did the summer startup track that summer. Um, we actually recruited a key advisor to, to my company um, from the summer startup track program, who's been working with us now for five years. Um, you know, I'm like slacking him uh, basically on a daily basis now. He's a key member of the team. Um, so that was that was phenomenal. Um, and then my second my second year, I got into the greenhouse program, which I took. Um, it's kind of just this pretty open ended um, course for um, people who are pretty serious about their startups as a second year student. Um, you get to kind of uh, work on your startup throughout this class and get exposure to other founders and um, a lot of other kind of successful VCs and entrepreneurs. So that program was amazing. And then by the end of my second year, I had kind of built enough traction with my co-founders such that we were able to pitch to the Lang Center um, and the investment fund from the Lang Center as part of the greenhouse program. And by the time I graduated, we received um, an investment from the Lang Center in addition to raising some other pre-seed funds um, from both institutional investors as well as friends, family, and angels. Um, and then now for the last three years, I've been full-time on my company. Um, we raised a venture around earlier this year um, from Alicorp, which is a New York-based VC. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, my startup wouldn't exist without Columbia and the Lang Center. Um, we've recruited uh, a lot of interns and I think maybe one or two full-time employees since uh, graduating from Columbia. Um, I also really leveraged um, the connection to the other kind of schools um, like throughout the Columbia ecosystem when I was there. So not only did my co-founders come from the medical center, I took a couple classes there. Um, actually some of the health tech classes that are offered at Columbia are pretty amazing. My professor of, of that class is now an advisor and an investor in the company. Um, and so really throughout my whole Columbia experience, I was both learning, networking, um, really taking advantage of the tremendous amount of, of resources and people, um, not only within Lang, not only with Columbia Business School, but with, within the broader Columbia um, ecosystem, which is which is quite diverse um, and quite rich. And so I you know, had a tremendous experience um, building my startup while at school. It's kind of this risk-free option you get, right? Where if it doesn't work out, you know, you're still graduating from Columbia, um, you'll still be fine. And so I really leaned into that. Um, you know, I, I wasn't only just doing my startup at school. Um, I did have some fun like eating nuggets and I did get some travel in, but um, yeah, it was, you know, I really look back on my experience at, at CBS um, really quite, quite positively. Um, and it's a, it's just, the school has been a, a kind of a constant source of support resources help um throughout the way so incredibly grateful for my my time there the resources lang has been um really really instrumental to to us getting where we are now um thank you lauren so i believe we're at our q a portion of the webinar which is i'm very glad to reach this point because we have a ton of questions in the chat um so I'm gonna to try to lump them into some common themes I'm seeing. Um, so the first question I'm gonna call out is if you can all talk about um, how New York City is integrated in the you know students' experiences working with the Lang Center. How are you integrated with the VC community, the startup community um, within New York City and how is that kind of influencing and shaping the, the programming and resources? I can take a first stop at that one. Yeah. Um, as you all saw in like one of the earlier slides, there is a very significant 
um, alumni present in both the venture capital and entrepreneurship um, ecosystems from CBS alumni. And I think that that definitely influences the experiences that our entrepreneurs have. Um, many of those investors participate in our programming, either as judges or mentors. So you do have access to that entrepreneurial and investing community. Uh, also, as a founder, uh, just being in the presence of and in the midst of what is one of the biggest hotbeds in entrepreneurship and venture capital in the U.S. Um, is invaluable. Like earlier this year, I think it was like about last month, CNBC uh, pretty much had an article stating that New York is one of the, is the second largest entrepreneurial um, hotbed in the U.S., second only to Silicon Valley. And it gives you access to both other founders, to venture capitalists, other kinds of investors, as you're considering both growing, launching, and scaling your startup. Um, we often have an, entrepreneurs and investors come to speak in our classes as guest speakers, uh, lead workshops for our students, but also just serve as advisors and mentors and be and participate in our programming. So you get access to them in lots of different capacities. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll add a couple things. Um, it, it, so not only is there, um, uh, New York City is full of alumni that are in the ecosystem that you can tap into, um, but there's also just in the general New York City ecosystem, the, we really emphasize a lot here customer discovery um, and testing out your problem solution and iterating on, on that until it resonates with customers. And to do that, you need to speak to actual customers. And what better place is there to do that than New York City, where there's all types of people and all types of businesses. Um, let's say if you were in Ithaca, let's say, um, to take a random example, um, it would be much harder to go out between classes and talk to visit visit um, potential customers that are you know either consumers or or businesses. So you have access to that. Um, you also have a number of accelerators, some very very. Um, of some excellent accelerators where we have contacts such as Techstars and ERA. Um, and the last thing I'll mention, because I did mention it before, as part of our Columbia Venture Fellows program, I mentioned that we pair you with a um, a local venture capital firm in that's based in New York City. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pivot a little bit to a question I've seen a few times and that I also often get on the admissions team. Um, can you talk about just the structure of uh, generally getting involved with um, some of these programs and, you know, starting to take um, classes within the curriculum? I think there needs to be a little bit of demystifying as to the um, way you can start, like, start these, um, taking yeah. advantage of these resources once you're at the business school. I think a lot of students come in a bit overwhelmed and a little confused about, you know, what do they need to be accepted to, what do they need to apply to versus, you know, what's kind of at their fingertips. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, I'm happy to take out the first stab at the uh, <laughs> question, Lara. So I think uh, let's break this down into both the curricular for the classes and the co-curricular. So you'll know when you come to the business school, your first term will be focused on taking the core, which is, you know, that's the 90% of the students will just wait until their second term to take um, electives. If you exempt out of the core class and you have a very a big interest in entrepreneurship or venture capital, assuming that there is space in the classes, you could potentially start taking those electives in your first term. In terms of when can you take the classes and what is the order? Uh, for entrepreneurship, we, both, we first have foundations of entrepreneurship, that is the foundational elective. Um, then it's launch your startup, then it's launch your startup two and or greenhouse, which can be taken. It's more of like a branch path, but they're not mutually exclusive from each other. From a venture capital perspective, there is foundations of venture capital. And after that, you can take build an investment thesis and or a venture capital seminar. From a co-curricular perspective, um, now there's two different ways to approach it. And it really depends on where you are in both your student journey but also in your journey as an entrepreneur. We have tried to kind of demystify the kind of the order in which you engage with our programming. So in the spring term in earnest, that's when we start our programming for 
first time founders for first year students. So in the spring term, we have an ideation workshop taught by Professor Melanie Brooks. We have a pitch event where you can practice your pitch in front of peers and get feedback from judges. Uh, we have our Founders Initiative grant program where we get where you can apply for micro grants to help you with um, like those initial costs of thinking through a startup that is in the spring term. In the summer, we have summer startup track, which I spoke about before. And then in your second year, we offer a lot of workshops in different areas, uh, depending on what the needs are and the feedback that we get from our students. So for example, today, this afternoon and during lunchtime, we have an MVP development workshop to help students uh, iterate on their MVP and you know, be able to make changes based on feedback they're getting from them after doing customer discovery. In the past, we've done workshops on growth hacking, a kind of a legal 201, so demystifying incorporation and what does that mean? So it, it really varies. So for first years, we have that kind of track from spring to at the end of summer that kind of helps you think through the idea from ideation to close to MVP development. And then for second years, there's more one-off workshops on different aspects of your MVP to help you with kind of getting to that next stage. They're not necessarily mutually exclusive from each other. Uh, so if a first year, you can definitely in participate in the workshops that are more quote unquote designed for second years, we don't exclude. We allow students to self-select and do what's relevant to them. And I hope that help, that's helpful in terms of thinking through the, the curricular and the co-curricular. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'll just add a couple things to add on to that. Um, one is that I think um, there's, there's sometimes a perception that you need to apply to the Lang Center to be a member. Um, that is not the case. Everybody is a member of the Lang Center as soon as you step on campus here. And all of our resources are available to all students. Um, and that includes executive MBA, MBAs as well, if there are any um, potential students here. Um, and so you, everybody has the same chance to take the, the curriculum, the elective courses, as well as applying to our accelerator type programs. And then of course, events and resources and workshops that are just open to the school. Um, and we have a weekly newsletter that goes out to, to all the students so that you don't ever miss um, a deadline or an event coming up. Um, and then I think I just to underline what Gabriel said is you come here and sometimes people right away, they like, they have an idea, they want to launch it immediately. Um, and we kind of tell people it's, it's okay to breathe, take the core, focus on your first term here, getting a handle on all the millions of resources here at business school, not just the Lang Center. And then towards the spring, I think it's, you know, it's great if you can take, let's say foundations of entrepreneurship start working on an idea. Um, we will provide also additional resources to ideate. Um, and then um, Gabriel kind of went over the other spring resources and support. It goes, um, it a, has a very specific um, like journey. And then for summer startup track, it, it is, I wanna, I wanna just say that it is a very large inclusive program. Um, it's not very difficult. We just to get into. We just ask that you have a real like a, an idea that you're excited about and a deck to go with it that you've put some thought and research into. But we we take all levels, so people come in actually with just a concept that is that is well worked out. But like we've we've had people that have launched businesses, and we have a lot of people really early stage that are just um, just have an idea that they they want to work on through the summer. Thank you. That's really helpful um, context, even for myself, as I get these questions. And um, I'm glad you brought up the pivot um, point about, you know, coming to business school to launch a startup for the first time. Can you also talk about um, students making pivots um, into VC who have never, you know, worked in that space prior to business school? Um, can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, so I will say that maybe even possibly more so than entrepreneurship, if you are really, really focused on venture capital, you do have to focus pretty quickly only because um, there are a limited number of, of VC positions out there and opportunities. And if that's what you want to go for, you um, I, I would advise, and if you talk to the students here, many of whom will talk to you as perspectives, um, generally they get focused right away and, and have internships, in-semester internships, pretty early on, or or if not internships, at least they're building that community and talking to as many people as possible. 
so that um, when you apply, let's say, to Columbia Venture Fellows, that you have a lot to talk about, have proven that you are dedicated to this path. You have, we ask you actually to write up a one page of a unique viewpoint investment thesis in the area of the sector of your choice. And that is right when you get here. That's um, pretty much, we're just wrapping up those interviews right now. So that that you um, you really should think about hitting the ground running. Um, some people have, you know, have a certain amount of work experience, even pre MBA, but that is, that's not the norm, I would say. So you could certainly pivot. And a lot of people do through when you come to CBS, um, it's just it takes it takes a lot of focus and work um, and and building up that building up your view, viewpoint and building up your your community around it. Thank you, um, Lawrence. A question specifically for you. Um, can you talk a little bit about which courses or resources? I know you mentioned a ton that you took part in, but which ones really stick out in your mind as um, you know leaving the most mini- meaningful impact? Um, from your time in the Lang Center and at CBS? Um, it's probably greenhouse program as a second year student, just because it's a whole year. Um, it's pretty open-ended. I think it's I think it's a three hour course per week, if I recall. Um, and it you can kind of just use the time as you as you see fit, right? So whether it's talking to other founders, talking to the uh, professors. Um, I mean, part of the time for classes, they bring in like guest speakers and experts in certain areas. Um, so it's very practical from that perspective. And um, a lot of entrepreneurship is just learning by doing. And I think that course is like the perfect the perfect example of, of that. So to me, you know, the culmination of that was getting an investment from the Lang Center. So the outcome was, was, was lucky and I'm grateful for it. And um, yeah, I'd say that was the most rewarding, fruitful, I guess, class that I took offered by Lang. And while I have you, what was the correct answer on the chicken nuggets? <laughs> oh, 50, 57. 57, wow. These guesses were like in the hundreds. I'm like, what? But Very ambitious. Good Good thing we don't do case studies as part of the admissions process because that that would be not bode well for some students. Oh my gosh. Um, Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, Okay, I'm going to pivot a bit to another question that I've seen um, a few times in the chat. Can you talk a little bit about our international student population and um, any um, students who are interested in launching or continuing a um, company that they start overseas? and what resources the Lang Center can can offer those students. Gabriel, you wanna take that? Um, yeah, so in terms of resource and support that we offer our founders, we have, you know, all of our resources are available to all students, whether you're looking to um, have a startup that's incorporated in the United States or in another country. Um, I'm not sure if there's, a, if there's a, something in particular that you were interested in knowing, uh, how we can support you, but in general, we support students that have that are looking to be entrepreneurs, regardless of where that is. And we do have many entrepreneurs who um, go and start a company outside of the U.S. Um, and ultimately, we continue to support them in any way that we can. Um, and I think Lawrence can speak to that because it's partly um, AOMD is both in the U.S. and in Korea. Is that correct, Lawrence? That's um, correct. Yeah. So at least we have one guest speaker who can speak to that. But in general, we we are here to support all students, regardless of where looking to uh, launch their ventures. And Lawrence, I don't know if there's anything that you can add for your specific particular experience as a founder that's has a venture that's over two countries. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there are any specific like resources or programs dedicated to that but like the network and the advisors that Lang brings in I think you could probably leverage for that right so um I would you know if I were a student I would probably have no qualms asking folks at Lang like hey you know these are the resources I need do you have any mentors that help me that could help with this this and this um I didn't my business didn't become cross border until post CBS which is why, you know, I don't necessarily have too many specifics, but if I, that had happened while I was at school, I would probably just 
you know, reach out the line directly to be like, I, I'm having trouble with FX or I need, you know, some advice on hedging or setting up a subsidiary, right? Like who, who might, you know, where might I turn to? Thank you. Um, another question I've seen a few times is if you could talk a bit about how the Lang Center um, partners maybe with the Tamer Center and how you're working with um, local communities and working on the social enterprise side of, of things a bit as well. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll um, kick us off. I'm sure um, Gabriel has things to add. So we um, work pretty closely with, with the Tamer Center because uh, they're pretty focused on entrepreneurship as well. Um, as a student, you do not have to choose Tamer or Lang. So we, um, well, Tamer is focused on social enterprise. We also, um, uh, all of our resources are open to social enterprise as well, as well as, you know, any other. Um, I guess our only requirement is if you want an investment and you want to raise money, then you need to be, you do need to be a C-Corp. Um, so I don't, we co-sponsor events. Um, sometimes we share resources. We have, um, we have done events where we showcase, uh, give, give students an opportunity to showcase, um, their startups at a table and we fight in the, invite in the community. Um, and we actually have a space on the second floor of Geffen Hall. That is a co-working entrepreneurship space that we share with the Tamer Center, as well as the Columbia Harlem Small Business Development Center, which is also based here. So we sort of pool resources and work together and have um, have have joint events where wherever that makes sense with our partners. Awesome. You know, and just to add to what Lara said, I mean, ultimately, it's not a zero sum game. We collaborate with them. Our students will engage with programming from both centers, same with the classes. So we definitely have had students who've taken what's quote unquote our classes, but also taking tamer classes. And they're often, you know, while there might be some constant overlap ultimately, um, and that's what whenever there is, we will specify if you take this one class, you cannot take this other class. For the most part, students will leverage resources from both centers. Ultimately, it is entrepreneurship. Um, it's just that one is more focused on social enterprise specifically, and Lang is and the Lang Center is more like generalist entrepreneurship with a slight focus on more like venture backable startups. But that's not necessarily the only kind of startup we support. We support family businesses, uh, nonprofits. We are here to support anyone who considers themselves an entrepreneur. Yeah, and I, and I believe part of that question had to do with um, support for the local local community, and that is a focus of Columbia Harlem Small Business Development Center that I mentioned that um, that we work with at times. Um, there's also a student organization that consults with local businesses. I think Gabriel, you know a little more about it. Yeah, the Small Business Consulting uh, Corp. So they they partner with the S Small Business Development Center, the SBDC, um, and as part of this consulting. Uh, organization. They work with small businesses in the Harlem community, uh, giving them advice in terms of business problems and helping them scale and uh, be able to grow in the future. So that is something that exists at the business school. Um, it's through the small through the SBDC. And then Tamer has a, a new initiative called the Social, the Inclusive Entrepreneurship Initiative, where they support the, the Harlem community as well to create inclusive entrepreneurial ecosystems. Um, within the Harlem community in, with the support of both students and faculty at the business school. Thank you. Um, a small pivot in my in my next question. We've talked a lot about, you know, students launching startups, starting companies, joining venture funds. Um, can you talk about the resources and support that the Lang Center offers for students seeking to join an existing startup, um, you know, not necessarily founding one and launching them themselves, but to join one in the startup community. So, yeah, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go. Lara. <laughs> Uh, I was, um, and you might have more to add to this. I, I think the the best program to talk about is um, with that is called Summer Fellowship Program. So we will award summer stipends to students that have a summer internship working at a, a startup under under ten million in revenues, I think it is, or um, at a VC fund that is under fifty million assets under management, 
Um, so those those firms typically don't pay as well as some of the big consulting, finance, or other internships you might um, you might be recruiting for. But we will um, we will match your salary up to a certain point for the summer to give you that experience working at a startup or a small VC fund. Yeah, and then just to add to that, in term, so I think kind of breaking this down into two different um, kind of answers. While you're a student here, what resources do we provide you to join a startup rather than starting your own? I think the one main one is we have a founder's marketplace that's on, uh, there's a link on our website where if you're looking for someone to join your venture or if you're looking to join another venture, you can make a post. And if there's anyone who's looking for someone with your skill set, they'll reach out to you. Um, but aside from that, I would say that the main way that we encourage and incentivize those who are interested in joining startups is through our programming. And if you are active and attending our workshops, our events, you likely will meet people who are looking for someone to join their idea. Like I know even during summer startup track, we have definitely seen teams kind of merge with each other based on like similar ideas or interests. And a lot of it happens organically. We provide the platform for people to connect with each other, but ultimately, um, uh, it's on you as a student, as an alum, to like make those connections and find a co-founder, find someone to join your venture. And similarly, if you're looking to join an alumna, alums startup, we provide the platform with the opportunities for you to connect with uh, with folks. And then ultimately, it's you know it, the you leverage that opportunity and make those connections organically. Yep. There is a similar question that I see on the chat of like, can new students join existing projects under Greenhouse? Um, I, similar to that, the answer is um, you, you wouldn't be able to join something as directly in Greenhouse, but those ventures, those students tend to be very committed during their the entire time that they're here. Um, so if you meet them during your time at CBS, either in some of our startup track, either one of our workshops or an event, uh, many students are always open to finding co-founders or people who can uh, share in the journey of entrepreneurship. So definitely the, there's always opportunities to join other ventures started at CBS. Um, so I think we've gotten through the biggest bulk of the main questions. Um, I know we only have a few minutes left and we we have a little bit to wrap up, um, but before we end our questions, I'd love to ask each of you if you could share a piece of advice um, for these prospective students um, who are right now, you know, focused on the admissions process, of course, but are likely thinking about pursuing um, a career in venture capital or, you know, starting their own company one day after business school. What advice do you have for them, you know, at this moment? Um, I'd love to hear from all three of you. Uh, sure, I'll start. I'll start us off. Um, so, I mentioned before that we have put a large focus here on customer discovery, and so one thing we tell our our students is, um, you know, we'll often get students coming in saying, like, I have an idea, I want to build it. Um, and what we usually say is, is caution them is, okay, that's exciting. If you have something you're really excited about, I think you should pursue it. Um, but also keep an open mind and focus on the problem that you're solving, clearly define the problem that you're solving, whether that's um, like define the size of that problem and the potential market for it, and then talk to customers to figure out that solution. Don't fall in love with your solution because it can tend to close you off to like what the market is really going to be excited about. Gabriel? Um, I have two pieces of advice. The first one is entrepreneurship is not a sprint. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's going to be a long process. Don't feel that you need to have your MVP in two weeks and be out to the market in a month. Oftentimes we see students who spend the entire first year and even the entire two years still focusing on customer discovery and iterating that MVP and just getting feedback, and that's perfectly fine. Your journey is going to be unique to you, and you don't have to like benchmark against what other students and your peers are doing. It's your own journey. The second piece of advice is um, you don't need to know everything about the Lang Center and our resource and our courses by the time you start. We are always here to answer questions. We love hearing from what students are working on, and we're always available to 
be a thought partner to provide advice and help guide you through navigating the resources. Um, that's why we have our virtual drop-in hours. That's why we have a space on campus and we have the Innovation Lab, which is our co-working space. So you're always welcome to reach out to us. We love answering questions and supporting students. So make feel free to always leverage us as a resource as you're navigating the business school. I, I would maybe offer two pieces. One is, I was mentioning this previously, but I think the MBA experience, whether it's at Columbia or, or elsewhere, I'm biased towards Columbia, but um, I think you just got to use that experience as time to work on something and build something um, because it's really all upside. Uh, and at Columbia, um, you know, I think you could really get super powered or supercharged um, to, to build and iterate and um, create and Maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't, but uh, I think just that the experience in and of itself is is worthwhile. And um, to to do that while you're like at school is 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 a pretty amazing unparalleled opportunity. So I would say go for it, um, even if you're not really sure about your idea. I think you if you commit to to doing something and building something, I think you'll have a really rewarding um, MBA experience. And then the second. Thing I would I would just offer throw out there is that building your network is actually really really crucial I think to your startup journey especially really in the early days but but throughout the the entire experience so again as I was alluding to earlier um, I pulled in professors um, who I'd taken their classes with I pulled in advisors that the summer startup track paired me with um, and you know the countless connections I made at Columbia and 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 beyond, but really, even in the early days, the, the networking was really, really beneficial um, and directly impactful on my uh, business and where we've, where we've come. Great advice from all three of you. Um, so I'm gonna wrap us up here. Thank you so much, Lara, Gabriel, and Lawrence for spending some time with us this morning, taking time out of your busy day to teach us more about the Lang Center and offer your wisdom and advice um, on all things entrepreneurship. Um, I personally learned a lot that I plan on taking with me in my um, future conversations with prospective students. Um, if your question was not answered today, um, please feel free to reach out to the admissions team. Our contact information is on this slide. Um, I believe the Lang Center team is also going to drop their um, drop-in hours in the chat. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Oh, thank you, Lara. Um, I just saw it come through. Um, thank you again. Best of luck in your application process. Again, thank you to the Lang team, and we hope to see you soon at a future event. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everybody.